Good morning, everyone. I'm Jane Wattrell, Communications Manager for Orange County Government. We have just gone through a wonderful oath of office ceremony. We have a brand new commissioner and two reelected commissioners, and it is their day. Yes, let's have some applause. Yes. This is, a, this is a wonderful day, and what we're going to do is invite each commissioner to come up, just say something briefly. This is the first time uh, the media is going to meet Commissioner Nicole H. Wilson, and then uh, Commissioner, yes, Commissioner Myra Uribe, and Commissioner Emily Bonilla. And then uh, Mayor Demings will uh, back clean up, and he will um, say a few words. So let's start with uh, Commissioner Wilson. All right, thank you so much. It feels very weird to take this off because I know that we, a lot of us, especially the people that really helped on my campaign and volunteered, some of them I've never seen without a mask except for on a Zoom call. So um, this is what my smile looks like. I do this all the time when I talk to you, um, even if you can't see it. Today is the beginning of a, of a new chapter in District 1, but I am dedicated to serving all the people of Orange County. I am humbled and grateful and I, will look forward to lighting um, the path of uh, a brighter future. I know we're gonna have some challenges in the days and weeks to come, and we're gonna need each other in compassion and grace, and I'm relying on that that I've seen from you thus far and moving forward. Um, thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. It is fantastic to be here today. You know, this is a real election for me because I won a special election, but more than anything, this means a lot to me because I represent the district that I was born and raised in and now raised my family. My rambunctious three-year-old reminded me today of how surreal today is. You know, we're in a challenging time, but we are a strong, strong community in a strong county. We've got to keep moving forward. We've got to continue to support our community as we get through so much but we also gotta make sure we support our businesses who are struggling just as much and who are the backbone of employment in Orange County. So for me, it's an honor to really get my full term in this time to continue working with a great mayor, a great county commission, and now we welcome with open arms our new commissioner in District 1. So it's always a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to represent my community in all of Orange County. So thank you all. Good morning, everyone. I just want <clears throat> to, again, thank everyone who believed in me, all the voters, my family, supporters, volunteers, donors, to help me get reelected, to be able to continue serving the constituents who mean so much to me. I am not a native of Orange County, but definitely have adopted it, and this is my home and where I chose to spend the rest of my life. I love my community. I want it to be the best community to play, live, and work, and that's what I work hard to achieve. And I will continue to work hard to achieve that for the next four years and beyond, because I will continue being a member of this community. And again, I just want to wholeheartedly thank everyone who really worked hard and believed in me and voted for me to continue working as your county commissioner. Thank you so much. And good morning to all of you. It is indeed my honor and privilege to have served as the Orange County Mayor for the last two years and working with our colleagues on the Board of County Commission. I welcome our new commissioner to the board and certainly our returning commissioners. I look forward to working with this commission as we continue to do the work of the people here in Orange County. The easy part has been the swearing in. The difficult part is running for office and then holding office. Uh, the challenge before us now is like none other in the recent history of uh, our world, in the recent history of America because we will have to preside during a period of time of response and recovery to a pandemic. And here within Orange County, we have been hit hard like many other areas. And so our commissioners, I know, have the passion, the heart 
to work on behalf of the people. And so if you are like me, if you're a resident of Orange County, you ought to be excited about the fact that there are people who are still willing to be of service to others, who are still willing to take on the awesome responsibility of being a public servant, of being an elected official, in a time when sometimes uh, you, you may not get a pat on the back for the work that you do. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about in that regard. But you know we don't do it uh, for a personal, personal favor. We do it because we love serving the people. And so thank you all. Welcome to the board. We have a couple of our other county commissioners who joined us. I know I saw Commissioner Maribel Gomez Cordero from District 4 and uh, Commissioner Christine Moore uh, from uh, District 2. Uh, they joined us here today. And so I look forward to uh, serving you all as well here within Orange County. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to our communications uh, director today. Uh, if there are any questions that you all may have, I'm certain that these commissioners are willing to respond to any of those questions that you might have. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if anybody has any questions, uh, you can raise your hand. We'll call on you. And okay, right there. All right. Uh, actually, this one's for the mayor. For the mayor. Okay. Mayor, if you could repeat the question for our audience. Thank you. The question is, what is Orange County doing to recover from the pandemic? We have been fortunate that uh, we were the direct recipients of Federal CARES Act funding in the amount of $243.2 million that we have been able to leverage here within this community to prepare our families, our individuals and families through crisis assistance that uh, we open up the portal again this morning uh, for some 20,000 of our residents to be able to make application uh, to receive uh, $1,000 to assist them with bridging the gap during this time of need. In addition, we have provided funds now to our small businesses here within our community through our CARES Act funding so that our businesses, uh, our small businesses in particular, can get back to work. We have over 90,000 small businesses here within our community. That, that truly is the backbone of this community as well as other communities across America. And then we have tried to make certain that we have worked with our larger businesses. Uh, we have worked with the federal government with the Paycheck Protection Program dollars that have flowed into our community. We have continued to make certain that we invest in our arts. We have put some money into our arts groups to make certain that they are able to thrive in this community. We have provided millions of uh, facial coverings of masks and hand sanitizer here within our community uh, to stop the spread of the virus within our community. So we cannot recover until we stop the spread of the virus in our community. So we have a very proactive approach to doing that. You have seen the multitude of executive orders that we have put in place here in this community. We have been proactive. We have been in front of uh, the, the needs of our community to make certain that that remains prevalent for all of us to make certain that our businesses and our people get back to work. We're continuing to diversify our economy here. We are trying to work every day to attract high wage jobs. We even partner with Career Source of Central Florida on a job retraining, an upskill program that is going on as we speak right here at the Orange County Convention Center so that those many individuals who lost their jobs, who may be in search of a new skill to get a job to make a higher wage, we are working with uh, Central Florida, uh, uh, Workforce of Central Florida as well as Valencia College to retrain those workers for technology types of jobs where they can uh, make upwards of $20 an hour at a time when here in Florida, you know, the minimum wage, if you will, is around 
uh, eight twenty-five an, an hour. So when you can get a job at twenty bucks an hour in this community, that's a pretty good thing. So we're going to continue to invest in our community, work with um, the Central Florida, the University of Central Florida, as well as those other Central Florida companies, to make certain that we are creating a business-friendly environment. So businesses will want to move here so that we can continue to create jobs, high wage jobs, but then we have to also protect tourism. Uh, like it or not, uh, tourism has um, made the Metro Orlando area what it is today. And so that's part of our uh, economic ecosystem, tourism. So we're working here with the businesses in the International Drive area, the theme parks and our other tourist businesses that make certain that they too can return uh, to the pre-pandemic level of business activity in this community. So you all know we had a, a reopening uh, task force that worked with our businesses to create uh, the blueprint by which they could open safely, reopen safely. And so that has occurred in our community as well. So I'm excited about 2021. If you're like me, 2020, <laughs> I'm ready for it to be over. It's been, it's, it's been a difficult uh, year for all of us. So 2021, we're looking up. We believe that we will see the return of our convention business here at this convention center. Uh, we had a net negative uh, impact on our local economy. When conventions canceled uh, their shows, it was nearly a $2 billion negative impact on our community. So the fact that in 2021, we have rebooked new conventions that will come here that will help to stimulate our local economy, and I believe that 2021 is looking up. Yesterday, the, the Comptroller for Orange County, Phil Diamond, announced the October tourist development tax uh, receipts. And of course, that's when people stay in our hotels, they pay a tax. Well, for the last six months since April, each month, our tourist development tax receipts have gone up each month. So I believe that in November, we're going to see a bump again in our tourist development tax receipts. In December, we're going to see another bump in, in those receipts. And I believe 2021, uh, we will get through this together. You know the tagline that we have, safer, stronger, together. We have a campaign underway in our uh, metropolitan community here. We're working with the surrounding counties to make sure that every person who lives here is able to do their part to help stop the spread. So we have created recently some compliance teams. We have created an executive order where we're going to hold accountable businesses who are violating those executive orders, who are not doing their part to stop the spread of the virus. So when you ask the question, I gave you a long answer, right? Because Orange County, this Board of County Commission is doing an awful lot to make sure that our businesses recover here in this community. So now, you have any more questions? No. <laughs> Do we have any further questions? The mayor I does have. All of <laughs> the history by Mayor Demings. Are there any more questions? I have one for Commissioner Wilson. Okay, Commissioner Wilson. I think everything has a new lens because of the pandemic. And I think immediately after filing to run for office, we went into lockdown. And I think one of the things that I can really honestly say that, you know, during these most difficult times, and there are so many people suffering, I've also seen such great creativity and adapt adaptability. And I've seen um, perseverance that like, I don't think we've seen in our lifetimes. And you know, my parents were here earlier. They had to leave. They're in their 80s. And they said they remember the polio vaccines going out, and it wasn't like this. So I think really if you look at what we're willing to do to sacrifice to uh, change and adapt and to see things in a different light, I think at the end when we come through this, we are going to be better for it. 
um, what brought me to run was that I, um, I felt very strongly about issues that when I found myself trying to engage my own commissioner, I, I was not getting answers. And I felt like, uh, much like Commissioner uh, Bonilla's um, comments inside, that then, you know, the easiest answer when you have a problem like that is to actually act, to do something. And, and I say easy with a asterisk by it because nothing about it was easy, but it was really important for me to make sure that if there was any chance at all that I could do something for my community. And then as soon as I opened that idea up, people came out of every corner of my district and every side of this county saying, you're speaking about things that really mean a lot to us, um, inclusion, um, diversity, making sure that we are good stewards for our environment. I think that right now during a global pandemic, we can all agree the best times you had in March were you were outside in the fresh air when you can kayak or paddle on a river. And unless we have people in decision-making places that, that appreciate those things, I'm not sure how we move forward um, is, you know, as, a, uh, as a community. So that was sort of my, my background. I hope that answered that. I think that's everything. We want to thank anybody else. Are we good? Okay, right here. Please go ahead. Who would you like to talk to? Commissioner Uribe. Hi, Melissa. Thank you. And just so everyone heard, Melissa asked, what specifically are some of the things I've done in District 3 to get down to our community and our businesses? And I briefly mentioned it in, um, in my speech. You know, this is a time unheard of. I actually have a large community that works in the service industry. So there was basic needs, food and masks and services and funding. So when we as a county voted to offer funding of $1,000, which today was the last day of the portal, and for businesses up to 10000 we have a language barrier, and we also have a social barrier where people aren't always going where they want to. They're not going to OCFL.net necessarily to get that. So how do we get out to people? We get out to people through churches. We get out through people to hand delivering. I made a flyer in English and Spanish, and literally on the front, I'd go to a business and say, this is for your business, and on the back, this is for your employees. And that's what it takes now in leadership. And I commend Orange County for really thinking outside of the box. And I just, I just tend to nag a little more, but it's proud when we are giving away food or giving away masks or seeing applicants in our district apply, because that means we're talking to our community. And that's something I'm very honored to be a part of and hope to continue over the next four years, because I say, we're in this together. There's no shame. We're in this together. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you all for being here. Thank you for talking to the commissioners and we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you.